chest is um, in pain. Something simple as breathing becomes really difficult. When my son first had his respiratory arrest, a lot of people said, oh, don't say he's had an asthma attack, he's asthmatic. I remember a large part of my life being spent in hospital. Me feeling guilty about the fact that my mum had to drop so much, um, her work, etc., to be in hospital with me. I used to write sorry letters to my mum whenever I was in hospital. I'd write, you know, I'm really sorry that you had to look after me for so long again. In this album, you've got pictures of me, and you can see I'm quite healthy, happy, smiling. And then there's this picture of me, um, and I'm having an asthma attack there. I'm really trying to draw some oxygen in. My skin tone, my eye sockets, you know, I don't look well at all. Asthma is a very serious condition. People die from asthma. We know that be about 1,400 people die each year of asthma. And what's really frightening about that is that the majority of those deaths are actually preventable. We've got a lot of people walking around in the community not realising that their asthma could be better controlled. We've got people being admitted to hospital and from the South Asian community we know that is three to five times more likely. Mia was a three-year project to find out how we can improve management of asthma for South Asian children. We took away all the presumptions about what works, what doesn't work, and we just went back to the people themselves and asked them, how could we help you? Where are the problems? What does asthma mean to you? So in the South Asian community, the word asthma doesn't exist. And nobody really thinks about that. They think that if we translate something into a leaflet, it will all be fine. So we went into the mosques, into the temples, into the community centres. We went into the places where they felt comfortable. So rather than traditional academic work, where we sometimes invite people to our ivory tower, we went out and reached out to the people. 90% of those people who die from asthma, we can prevent. So we have a duty to actually look at how we can prevent people from having this morbidity from the disease. People have become complacent about it. You know, it's only asthma. Well, it's not only asthma. It needs to be treated, it needs to be taken seriously. Healthcare professionals thought that they knew how to diagnose asthma. And, and that was, um, it was simple, they knew what to do, we have guidelines that they should be following. The families actually felt that diagnosis was the biggest problem. They didn't trust the doctors or nurses, they got different information from different people, and they felt that if they don't actually understand the diagnosis, how are they going to move to the next step of taking the medicine for a diagnosis that they don't actually understand in the first place? In the South Asian community, Asians really believe that you shouldn't get cold. You know, you shouldn't get, if you got caught in the rain and you got wet, you know, you'll die. <laughs> There's all these sort of, these beliefs. There are always people coming with all sorts of homemade Asian re remedies. If you do this, if you do that, you know, your child will get better. There was people calling up saying, we've found this sort of herbal treatment, we're going to bring it over. If I got a chest infection, apply barn leaf to her chest and it will draw out all the mucus and all the bad stuff. We found that there's a public awareness issue and the children, some of them were telling us that they were sitting at home with symptoms and not being taken to the doctor. So I think communication is one of the big issues that we found, finding people that the community feel they can trust and talk to about their problems, who understand their culture, their perceptions, um, what they believe in, and talk to them about things that matter to them. I think it's a two-way process. We need to be educating the community but we also need to learn from the community and that's what our project was about, finding out what they need to know and how we can tailor our information and our education to overcome some of the barriers that they're facing. People with asthma can live a normal life. They should be able to run, they should go to school, they should be able to work, there should be no um, impact on their life apart from having to take their medicines on a daily basis. I'm really glad that I took inhalers regularly. I manage my asthma because I'm 34 now and um, I'm in a really good place. There's nothing holding me back because I managed my asthma and asthma shouldn't hold anybody back. It shouldn't ruin lives. 
You have to ask yourself, do you want your life to be put on hold? Do you want to spend weeks in hospital? Do you want to not you know, miss out on school or work? Or would you rather just take a couple of puffs from your inhaler every day and get on with it? And I know what choice I'd make. I would take that inhaler in the morning, wherever I needed to, and enjoy my life. We know that we can manage asthma. Let's get in there. Let's improve the quality of life in this population. Mia has collated together a huge amount of evidence over three years. We don't want Mia to sit on a shelf somewhere. We want people to read it, we want people to act on it, and we want people to follow through and take it to the next step.